Hara frowned. The cuffs. Gideon smiled. She really was clever. He stopped her in front of the stall of fur coats. Pick one. It is a gift. No strings attached. She shook her head. You already put money down for the ship. His gold eyes sparked with emotion. And I would pay it again. I have lived a long time and I have collected a large amount of wealth. You do not have to worry about money, my dear. Hara shook her head. It is your money not mine. Giving the money to her would still mean it was his, but he knew trying to explain the connection between the collection and the collector was going to make her angry. Instead, he distracted her by lifting a beautiful grey fur coat off a stand and draping it over her shoulders. Hara said as she tucked her hands in the pockets. It is a man's coat. It looks good on you. She took her hand hands out of the pockets to smooth her hand over the fur. Before she could come up with an excuse not to buy it, he flicked his fingers and dropped some coins on the table of the stall owner. The coins disappeared as quickly as they appeared. Hara thought about complaining but the coat was very warm and it really was cold. If she thought Gideon expected anything from her she would have put the coat back regardless of the money exchanged. Gideon placed his hands into his pockets and she asked as they walked away. Aren't you cold? Gideon tapped his chest. I have my own heat. Hara huffed, but didn't say anything about the coat. You are insufferable, Gideon. He grinned at her and said, if that were true you wouldn't be here. Now I know why your mother abandoned your egg. The words were harsh but there was amusement in her voice. Gideon bumped his shoulder with hers as he said, so I could be free to fly on my own. Chapter 11 They were to meet Moria, their Roshian contact, in a warehouse. Gideon had insisted on coming and even though Hara was supposed to go on her own. She couldn't convince him to stay behind. It had been another thing to convince Angel but she had remained behind. Hara hoped that no one saw the clockwork creature curled up in the fur coat's collar. She couldn't very well deny the small dragon when she knew Talon was out there somewhere keeping an eye on everything as well. The warehouse was mostly empty when they entered. Gideon behind her look around. He sniffed, it smells like tea in here. A voice further into the warehouse said, Darjeeling to be exact. A woman stepped out from behind a large crate. She was an older lady, but still stunning. Her hair up in a loose bun. Her hands were tucked into a large fur coat. The woman added, I was under the impression you would be alone. Hara sighed. He is a dragon there is no way to make him do anything he doesn't want to do. Moria tilted her head sideways as she studied Gideon. I had heard you spent time with dragons. I thought they were merely rumors. Interesting. Moria came closer. This time her gaze was on Hara. So you are the one who stole my airship. Hara wasn't about to let this woman guilt trip her. Yeah, sorry about that. We have money. Moria stopped in front of them. She was a very small woman for her presence. That isn't how it works. That ship was made in our shipyards to play a particular part in our own interests. Selling it to you isn't in our interests. Hara frowned. She had hoped they could buy off the Roshans as easily as it had been to buy off the pirates. Hara finally said, well, I had hoped to settle all this as I'm tired of assassins. Moria's eyebrow twitched and she said calmly. The Rosh government does not deal in assassins. Hara waved it off. I don't care what the policy is for assassins I just don't want to kill some sad sods because they decided to take a contract on me. Moria pulled her hands out of her coat and laid a roll of paper on a low crate. She asked, do you know what this is? Gideon answered, it is the writ of transportation. Well a copy. It is very pretty with all the curly letters. All the countries in the world signed it. Moria seemed impressed then asked, you were there. He nodded. It was a great party. 
they had quail inside of ducks for the main course. Moria ignored his comments and motioned to the scroll. That also allows for the commission of privateers. The blazing blunderbuss has been commissioned as a privateer. That is our right. We don't particularly like people flying around in our ships and not working for us. So are we going to have a deal here? The blazing blunderbuss has a letter of mark and her job isn't finished. Gideon glared at the woman. Hara said, let me have a moment here with my associate and I'll have your answer in a jiffy. The woman shrugged and sauntered off with her hands back in her pockets. Gideon turned to her and hissed in a loud whisper. You can't seriously be thinking about becoming a pirate. Hara shrugged and said, I don't want to but what choice do we have? We will pick targets who are picking on other ships. We'll clean up the skies. Help others. Gideon rolled his eyes and said, you are away with the fairies if you believe that for a moment. Hara asked him. If we go through with this, will you stay? Her heart actually went into her throat at the thought of him leaving. She wasn't ready to lose him yet. Gideon turned his back to her and said, I don't know. Moria must have sensed they had come to the end of their conversation as she returned. So do you have an answer? Hara gritted her teeth. You know we don't really have a choice. Moria gave a warm smile which was more tooth than truth. Good. Here is your first target. Hara hesitated, but took the piece of paper Moria offered. Hara looked at the location and the name of the ship. Moria said, if I don't hear about the demise of this ship be sure that you will have trouble shortly afterwards. She turned and started walking away and she said over her shoulder. Kale isn't the only one good at infiltration. If Hara wanted confirmation that the Roche government had been behind the Roche Barkers she knew now Moria had her hand in that particular pie. Moria added conversationally. Oh, and your granddad's place is adorable. With that Moria was gone. Gideon was red with anger. His fists clenched. Hara touched her shoulder where Angel came out to click her concern. Hara asked, Gideon. I will kill her and eat her. Trust a dragon to first jump to violence to solve the issue. Or was it just a male thing? That won't work she is the hand of a monster. She isn't the monster itself. She tugged at him and said, come we need to get here fast otherwise we are in trouble. 